Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the Kalam cosmological argument. Premise 1. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. Premise 2. The universe began to exist. Conclusion. Therefore, the universe has a cause. Let's look briefly at the evidence for each premise. Premise 1. The idea that something can begin without a cause is a worse explanation than appealing to magic. Even if a wizard did conjure something up, that's still a cause of some type. The whole idea of something just sort of appearing uncaused just doesn't work. Let's face it, we have no examples in the natural world of anything beginning without some kind of cause. So this premise is constantly confirmed and never refuted. Premise 2. Typically, there are thought to be two alternatives, that the universe either began or else it has always existed. Of those two, the more likely one is the first, based on the scientific findings that are now available. For one thing, we know that the usable energy of the universe is decreasing and entropy is increasing. In the end, that usable energy will run out, and the entropy will grow so great that stars and planets won't be able to exist anymore as such. If the universe had been around forever, both of these things would have already happened if they were ever going to happen. However, there's another, even stronger reason for thinking that the universe isn't eternal in the past. It's logically impossible. You can't have an actually infinite series of finite events, because passing through an infinite number of events would take an infinite amount of time. In other words, if the universe had to pass through an infinite number of events, we would never arrive at this event. So, of these two alternatives, not only is it more likely that the universe is finite, but in fact, the idea that the universe has existed for an infinite amount of time is ruled out. Conclusion If both premises are true, the conclusion follows from them, and the universe has a cause, which makes it far more likely that God exists. Now, I could address some of the more common objections here, but I'm not going to for a couple of reasons. First, because nearly all of them have been addressed already by Dr. William Lane Craig, who's well known for defending this argument and has a lot of videos on YouTube if you want to check them out. Secondly, though, I don't really defend this argument. See, there's a problem with the second premise. It assumes that things begin to exist in the sense of coming into being when they weren't previously in being in any sense. This would require us to embrace a theory of time called the tense theory, or a theory of time, in which only the present really exists and the past and future don't exist anymore slash yet, respectively. In short, it's a theory that proposes that the scope of our actual existence is as narrow as a single moment in time, the present. I think this theory of time is full of problems, especially for a theist, but fortunately, you can still salvage much of the strength of this argument by just proposing a version of it which doesn't rely on things beginning to exist, like so. Premise 1. Whatever has a limited scope of time in the past has a cause. Premise 2. The universe has a limited scope of time in the past. Conclusion. Therefore, the universe has a cause. However, this isn't quite the same thing as the Kalam argument. In fact, it's closer to the argument from efficient cause, which we've discussed in episode 206. That's why I usually just prefer to use that argument instead. Still, this one works just fine if you believe the tense theory of time is true, or if you want to modify it in a way that makes sense, like this. Next time... What's the real cost of atheism? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.